point if a person has never had that physical boots on the ground experience then what sounds good in theory is almost like being an uncle it doesn't make you a parent still right uh, you know then your niece and nephew spending the night once a month don't it's not the same thing as your kids spending the night every night so to speak right. so but a lot but it's hard to get people to understand that if they've never been in that. They just they just don't have a context. You don't know what being a parent is. I don't care how many Lamaze classes you take and how many prenatal care classes you take until, <laughs> right. until that baby's in the world. Right. Until the right. baby's in the world. Once the baby's in the world, you can call yourself whatever you want. You can have as much or little education as you want. <laughs> it's, 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 it's on and it's in. So, no, bro, absolutely. All right. Well, it's seven. We're going to get started on time. Get it going okay. on time. So good morning, everyone. Happy Saturday. Welcome back to another Mindset Saturday where we learn how to think in order to prove the way, in order to improve the way we live. A couple of people have asked me this. Maybe I'll say it again at the end, but I'll definitely say it at the beginning just because a couple of people have asked me. Yes, I do work with people. I have classes, courses, individual sessions, consultations, things like that. That's in the, you can go to the mental.academy and sign up for any of those things. If you want to make an appointment, if you want to get a consultation, if you want to get reg regular one-on-one -on -one coaching, if you want to sign up for any of the classes or courses that I'm doing, all those different things. So people ask me, I don't really talk about it all that much because I'm on here and it's in and out, but I do want to make sure people know that it is available to them. Um, so if you're interested, if you were interested in me working with you, go on there, look, and, you know, keep it, keep it going from there. Like I said, I may say it again at the end because people ask me and, and don't know I do it or whatever else it is. So yes, I may say it again at the end because there aren't a lot of people here. If I don't <laughs> let people know, but just wanted to start off with that just because while I was thinking about it. Okay. So for some some of you who weren't here before the, you know, in the 6.30 to 7 o'clock hour, I was having a conversation and talking about some, you know, some fighting in the school and things like that between kids. And today I'm going to get off and running, but it reminded me of one thing that a little warm up or a little, did you know that we can go through and go over? Do you know historically why people shake hands? Why that actually started? Was it after fighting? Like, all right, we're cool now? Okay. Anyone else? Was it a symbol of uh, completion, like sealing the deal, like agreement? Okay. So if you, so to go around to the answer, which hand do people, so if you seal the deal, which, which hands, which hand will we shake with? Our right hand. Why not the left hand? Uh, historically, from what I understand, is that your right hand uh, <clears throat> is, uh, well, I know from Greek mythology, uh, Fides, F I D E S, uh, it was a sign of fidelity uh, and a form of a commitment. So that's what I understand it to be. Okay. Anyone else? Tell somebody said something. Yeah, I heard Amanda. Yeah. Anyone else? Can you hear me? Yeah? Yes. Um, usually, um, in war, they they had um. They always had their empty right hands. Okay, why is that? Um, because they, because when they, they will hold the weapon. They have to when you hold a gun, you gotta like you know dislodge, and you know the part of the gun where you go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you do your yeah. right hand. Yeah. You're using your right hand. So you go like that, and your left hand usually holds the weapon. So right. you always have why? your right hand empty. <laughs> right. Why Why is that? Why is your right hand holding it and your left hand stabilizing? 
Why is it the right hand? I don't know. That's how I I remember when I was learning about it. It was because of war. Like in war, your right hand was empty. You you focus. I your right hand is usually more known as a dominant hand more most of the time, but your right hand was empty when you was in war. So you always grab that what, hand, right. Hand. What if you were a lefty? Mm, I, that's not what they did in war. I don't think they allowed lefties, right? They made you be righty. So here's so here's the answer is twofold. Number one, because most of the earth throughout its time, most people have been right-handed. Most people have been right-handed. Right. Right, the majority. Not, not everyone, but the majority. Our, our people are right-handed. That's why, that is why, that is why people, that's why people shook with the right hand. It wasn't, it was, be, that's, that's one reason. One is because the majority of people were right-handed. Number one. And number two is because, and the, and the reason people shook was to let people know, because most people are right-handed, the reason people shook with the right hand was to let them know that you didn't have a weapon. It was to say, I don't have anything in my hand that I'm going to hit you with or shoot you with or whatever else because I'm right-handed, then I'm not going to do it with my off hand. Now, that's not necessarily the most accurate, probably thinking, but that was part of the thinking. Part of the thinking is most people are right-handed. So whatever they're going to do to harm you, they're going to do with their dominant hand. Most people's dominant hand is their right hand. Most people are right-handed. So having nothing in your hand, in your right hand and shaking, was also a sign that you didn't have a weapon, that you weren't going, that it was that you were actually safe to be approached and talked to, right? The President McKinley, the one who got assassinated early in the 1900s, which basically we talked about a couple of weeks ago that spurred the Secret Service really coming to protect the president. The person who walked up to him and shot him had a, had a, he walked up to him with a handkerchief over his hand. And so the president didn't say anything because he thought it was, he thought it was maybe the guy was main or he had a, his hand wasn't any good and he was hiding it because he was embarrassed. But no, really what happened was he was hiding the gun that he was going to shoot him with under that hand. He was right-handed. So he put the cloth over there and was able to shoot him. He was able to get closer to him because he was able to hide his hand. Right. And it was, and he thought it was because maybe something was wrong with it and things like that, but that's how he got close to him. But that is historically why one is because people, most people are right-handed and two, it was to show people that you don't have a weapon. That was that was the those are the two main reasons why. Now, over time, people make it into other things, but that was the dominant reason. Most people are right-handed. You can shake with your left hand, but most people aren't left-handed. So you know it's just a pattern of time. Hello? Yeah, somebody says yeah, you know what? You made that clear for me because I'm like, when I was like when I I I read about it before a long time ago. And it was like, oh, you know, that's what they did. They always had their weapons. And they left hand, but you just clarified, like, no, people would do it with their right hand. They used to shoot in the South with their right hand. You're right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So that's just because people are predominantly on the earth over the earth's time. People have been predominantly right handed. Right. So everything is, that's why you look at tables, especially back in the day when you had a little arm on the table on your little desk, you had a little arm, they were predominantly right handed. Those little things that went down your right side, those are right side because people are predominantly right-handed over the Earth's history. That's why that happened. Right? So it's good, just little things to know, just to make sense of things sometimes. Why is something the way it is and all the other different things, right? All right. Today's class, I was gonna label two, I was gonna label it two things. I just decided it could be. I decided it could be peekaboo. The other one was going to be witness protection, <laughs> right? I couldn't figure out which one it was going to be, but I just went with peekaboo just because I figured that would be a little more misleading as I'm trying to make the titles as misleading as possible to get everybody's attention and keep them guessing and all the different things. But, okay, so... Whether it's whether you're doing peekaboo, right? You're putting your hand over your eyes, right? You're here, you're not here, you're here, you're not here. You usually do it with your kids when you're playing games or with young people when you're playing games, you're here, you're not here. 
or like I said, the other alternative title, witness protection, basically, right? When you are hiding somewhere and you're given a different identity so that you, people don't, people who look at you don't know who you are or don't know who you were, right? Who you really are slash were. They are looking, even though they're looking at the same person, they think you're somebody new because you have a different identity, right? Witness protection when you're being hid, relocated from one thing to another, one place to another with a different identity. Same thing, peekaboo when you're hiding and you're here and you're hiding and you're here. My intention is not to motivate you. My intention is not to motivate you to be the best version of what you are not. My intention is to you is to inspire you to remember who you really are. That is the best version of you, the true you. I am not, my intention is not to try to help you be the best Marcus or Leslie or Veronica that you can be. That's not my intention because that's not really who you are. It's not my intention. My intention is to inspire you to wake up the sleeper, to remind you of who you really are, not who you think you are, not who you believe yourself to be, but who you really are. We are so cavalier and casual with our identity. Oh, I'm so this. Oh, I'm so that. Oh, I can never do this. Oh, this always happens to me. Oh, this or that, right? But when do we get really specific with our identity? What times in life do we like, no, I am this. When do, what times in life like somebody give me some examples. When in life do we get real specific about who we are or who we who we're thinking we are, but who we are? When do we do that? When we're fed up with something, when we're fed up with something going a specific way and we're in a place where we're determined to get it right or go in a healthier direction or when we're just like, yeah, basically like when we're fed up. Fed up? Okay. Who else? When else do we do it? When we believe others will be impressed with whatever statement we're making about who we are. Okay. When you're when you're given your history in a job interview, when you're um oh, to impress. Yeah, to impress. Okay. Who else? What else do we do? When else do we do it? Where else do we do it? I was going to say mad, so kind of along the lines of what Sparkle Bailey okay. said. Yeah. Yeah, like Jim Rohn said. Enough. Enough. <laughs> huh. That's it. That's I, This is going too far. It's time to turn it around. Okay, so we're fed up when we're trying to impress someone or some people. Okay, when else? When else are we really clear on who we say we are or who we really think we are? Like we are full on committed to it. When somebody mess with my kids. When somebody mess with my kids. Okay. Oh, okay. when we believe it. Okay. When okay, we let, believe me better, it. let me ask a better question. Where? Give me places where we are clear about, like where? When we're out in the world, when we go here, we're clear about who we are. About what? my identity is Johnny Reed. It ain't Jimmy. It ain't Lenny. It is this. Where are we clear like that? Where? When I when I eat raw, that's when I'm like extremely clear. When I eat crap, that's where everything is cloudy for me. But when I eat raw only, my mind, you can't tell me anything. I am God, literally. You can't tell me anything at all. Mm. Wow. Okay. So places like holistic retreats and things like that where the, the rules are specific during that time, there's like everyone there is just like on their highest um, spiritual 
journey and and then when they have to go back into the world it's like okay here are all the the things we were protected from when we were there they're all exposed we're, we're exposed to it now that we're back at home and so it's a different it's a different set of tests when we're out in the world but then when we're protected in those safe spaces we're all vibrating high at our highest so it's the okay. community the community makes a difference okay oh environment okay so from right. a location perspective, like the DMV, I was at the DMV this week. <laughs> <laughs> at the hospital. Right? Okay. Say it again. At the hospital. At the hospital. The hospital I was born at. They cut off somebody's uh, wrong foot. <laughs> wow. Jeez. Ooh. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. They were tripping. Literally. Anytime you're in court. Court? Court, yeah. Okay. So we could go on and on, right? Airport. <laughs> right? We could go on and on. But look at what these things represent. Like, look at look at the seriousness of these places, so to speak, right? Or the seriousness of these. Uh, these two right here, this is a serious thing you're trying to do. You're trying to impress someone for something. You're trying to get them to believe something about you that is to your advantage or benefit. What, what about a date? What What about dating? What about in dating? dating? Okay, dating. Right. That's a good one. That's job interview. To know who you job. are, right? To know job who interview. they are, job interview. Right. So that's my point is if you look at all these different things, we are very stern, firm, clear. Now, we may be wrong. Let's just say, maybe we may be wrong. About, we may be at the wrong gate at the airport. We may be at the wrong courtroom. We may be going to the wrong hospital room. We may be, we should have maybe went to a different DMV because the lines are shorter somewhere. But the point is that whenever we go to these places, we are very clear that our identity matters. We can't just be anyone. We can't be everyone. We can't be anything. And we don't want to be. Right. We don't want we, when we go to the bank. Right. Right. We don't want to just be. We don't want to be. Hey, Willie, what's up? No, it's William. Yes, it's William. You see, that? it's William. Uh, Willie goes out the door. Now, Willie was all good until you pulled up in the parking lot. Now it's William. Right. It changes quick. It changed. <laughs> right. It went from Terry to Teresa. It went from Les to Leslie, L-E. If you spell it out for them, make sure they know it, right? You want no, you don't want, there's no time for the games, cuteness. You're not going to let them, no nicknames right now or anything. Mom, don't they, don't they call you peaches? Not right now, son, not right now. No, it's, right, that's what they call my mom, right? My dad, my grandfather called my mom that. Like, no, it's Mona, right? Not right now, lucky, not right now, Marcus, it's Mona. Yeah, yeah, don't listen to them. Yes, Mona, yeah, here's my idea, right? Marcus says William the third to be exact. Yeah, to third, Mark, you're getting the third, junior, you're getting all this stuff, right? And so I'm saying all this and going into it, right, and exaggerating and all the other stuff for a reason. Look at all the places that these represent or all the things that this represent. Look at when you get serious, when you get serious or where you get serious, Right. I want you to be able to see that so that you understand the value of that. You understand really like, OK, why am I why is it so important for me to be who a certain thing here, but not but I can just be anything anywhere else? Why? Why are we doing that? Why are we hiding? Why we're peekabooing? We're saying we are. We are in one set of. Like we are saying, this is who we are. I don't care what you think, how you feel. This is just what it is. Over here, it is subject to everyone's opinion, emotion, what they think and like, and all the different things, right? So we're going back and forth, and we're straddling our identities according to what we think our experiences are. But in medical terms, what would they call that? Psychological terms, what would they call that? Psychosis. Can you repeat that? Psychosis. Split personality. Yeah, right? So psychosis, split personality, bipolar, schizophrenic. Take anyone you want. None of them you're going to really like, right? But we're doing them constantly. We're constantly navigating between this one, between this one. Oh, I'm going to the bank. Okay, now I really know who I am. I come out of the bank. Well, who do you think I am? Oh, I'm going to the DMV. No, L-E, 
S, yes, no, L, <laughs> no, L first, right? You're in the hospital. It, uh, no, it is Sparkle. It's S, P, no, yeah, no, S, S, no, S as in Sam. You start being a military person, yeah, B as in Bravo. And an alpha, you go, you make sure they get it, right? But when you walk out, you and you're, 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 well, what do you think? Well, how do you feel? Well, what do you say? I am? Really? Or I'm just so this, I'm just so that. And that has nothing to do with this over here. So my point is, is that if you were to take any of those things medically or psychologically, you'd be bipolar, schizophrenic, this or that. And most of us are doing it and nobody has any mess. Nobody has any type of diagnosis. Nobody has any medicine. Nobody's taking any medicine, so to speak. And you run around and got five different personalities. <laughs> and, and wonder why you can't get one thing straight. You got five people doing it. And you can't get one thing straight. We're, we're thinking on 15 different tracks of just what I think or what they think. And well, this is a combination of what I think and they think. This is just what I think. This is what... They, just what they think, and we're we're hiding, right? So when we don't know who we are, then we start making, then we start making or hoping or asking people to take responsibility now. Now it's their fault. Now it's now we're asking, well, since I don't know and I'm not sure and anything else, because all these things are a part of your life. But it's funny. How when we get to life, the, all the clarity is gone now. All these things that we have made up your life, they're part of your life, the things you do in your life. But when it comes to our life, the actual thing itself, right, then we start taking everybody's, we're open for suggestions. It becomes like a suggestion box. Mm -hmm. Hey, what do you think I am? Hey, what do you think? Do you think I'm smart? Hey, you think I'm cute. Hey, do you think, what do you think about? Mm -hmm. Well, what do you think? Oh, well, well, how do you feel? Well, what do you say? And we start, it opens up to a donation box. We open up to a suggestion box and all the other things. So then when we don't know who we are, then we can't take proper responsibility for it. If, I, if, if that's not my name on the ID, that ain't me, right? You always see in the movies when they pull, when they pull the, the gangster over and they take the drugs out of the car. What is, what's the first thing they say? Who am I? That. When they pull the gangster over in a movie and the police pull him over, pull him or her over, and they take drugs, they find that drugs. Ain't mine. That ain't mine. That ain't right? mine. That ain't mine. I never I never seen that before. Right. I never seen that before. You planted that on me, right? <laughs> There's never nobody, nobody takes any responsibility. And sometimes they did do that. It's all true, right? But but the first thing they say is that's not mine. Yeah. I've never seen that before. You planted that on me. But guess what? Most of our lives, do you know what we're saying? Same thing. Mm. That ain't mine. Right? I've never seen that before. Be uh, better said, I didn't know. Right? You planted that on me. Better said, it's your fault. That's not mine. It's not my fault. Hmm. So then what happens is because we don't we don't have an identity that our life is named under, we're switching all the time, because we don't have an identity, we can't take responsibility. If we can't take responsibility for this life, somebody has to. Or we whether they just take it over or whether we give it away for it to be taken over. Now, what do you think are some things that that either take it over or we give it away for it to be taken over? What are ways, what are ways that we give our life away? To who, to what? What are some things that are, that we give our life to be or things or people that we give our life to be taken over by? Our time. Our time. Our time? Yeah. What do you mean by that? Like time that we could be spent on ourselves 
we're spending time on other people or doing things for others that doesn't benefit us in any way. Okay. Let me let me let me let me piggyback off Latoya real quick. So like say for example you're a workaholic but you're not taking care of yourself. Mm -hmm. Say for example you're a, a volunteer holic and you're not mm -hmm. taking care of yourself. Say, for example, you're an overeater, and you're not mm -hmm. taking care of yourself, you're pouring into other business, other industries are winning because of you, but you're losing in all these spaces, like you're paying your bills, but you're mentally losing it. Mm -hmm. Your body's not being taken care of, you're investing in your kids or your spouse or your business or your community, but you're not pouring into yourself. You're spending your time pouring into all these other places except you. Mm -hmm. What... What things do we give ourselves away to that we think that we think either should make our life better? We that what things do we give ourselves away to that we think should make our life better? Whether it's momentary, okay, momentary, long term, whether it is whatever it may be. Go ahead. Um, in the chat, Monique said energy and okay. Amanda titles. Okay. I was thinking like romantic love, religion, uh, you know, addictions, alcohol, drugs, things like that. I was going to say your opinion, like your thoughts and ideas. So drugs, politics, religion as the way people pursue it. Other people. Opinions, yeah. Other people, right? You know, opinions come from people, right? So other people, right? right? Meaning, we now say, since I don't know who I am and I can't take responsibility for myself, I am going to have drugs do it. I'm going to have them, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take this so it can make me feel a way that I can't make myself feel. I don't know how to feel. And it's going to take over for a while. Five minutes, five days, five hours, whatever. To your point, whoever said addictions, that's all it is. You're now, your your drugs become your permanent chauffeur, so to speak. They become your relationship, meaning they become something that you have a consistent relationship with because you're saying, I'm consistently handing my life over to you to do something for me that I don't feel the ability to do because I don't know who I am or what I am, so how am I going to help myself? So I'm going to give that power to help myself over to something else. I'm going to use this to do it. When we put in the chat, lack of self-awareness. That is correct. That is, but that, so we're talking about, that's that's why it happens. But these are things, and there's a lot of them, but these are just things, drugs. Well, if I'm a, if I'm a, if I'm a Democrat or if I'm a Republican, mm -hmm. or if I go to this church or, I, or I'm this religion, or if I hang around these people, if I get to know these people, if I, whatever, go ahead. So Sparkle said, what about here saying, and then she added the news. Mm -hmm. The news. That's but those, those are yeah the news opinion hearsay. It's other, those are all coming from other people. Right. Right. Those are all coming from other people. But the point is, is that we are giving our we are giving our power away. We're giving our life away. We are we are playing peekaboo with our responsibility. Mm -hmm. Now you see me. Now you don't. Now I am. Now I'm not. Right. We are witness protection. I used to be so and so, but now I'm over here. I'm so and so. But at the hospital, you didn't give your you didn't give yourself to any you, you didn't care if you were a Democrat or not. I need blood or I need help. I don't care. All the things where you have to be what you are, those things, all those other things where you don't go out of the go by the wayside, quit. You care. You care. You don't care if you're a Christian and if you walk out and you have a headache so bad that you went to the emergency room and the doctor walks out and they're a, a Muslim, you're going to be like, oh, hell no, I'm leaving. Anybody going to do that one? <laughs> right? You walk out and you, you're a dimmer, you walk in the emergency room and you find out right before surgery that your doctor is a Republican and you're a lifelong Democrat, you're going you're gonna to be like, man, get me up out of here. I'm changing my mind. <laughs> All the things that you, all the things that were so real to you a couple minutes ago, 
that you cared about your name. You cared about them pronouncing it correctly, spelling it correctly. Junior, the third, Miss, no, MRS, because I miss so and so, or just MS, or what, like whatever your particulars and specifics are, you care about until something else happens that's even more important. But the things that aren't important were very specific on, and the things that are were not, in the sense of who we really are is the most important. Who we really are, that is what we are here to remember every week is who we really are, not who we think we are. Our humanity is who we think we are. That is the highest level of consciousness, God, the universe, whatever you want to call it, indwelling a human body. That is what makes a human. All of us collectively, that makes humanity. But without that energy, that consciousness in that physical form, that physical form is no longer a human. It is dead or it never exists in the first place. That is, that, is, that is who we think we are in this game, but that's not who we really are. If we can remember who we really are, we will act differently. Why do you think people in all that trouble and all those mafia movies back in the day or all these FBI shows when they are moved to witness protection? I mean, they can't, most of them aren't getting surgery. Most of them, the government's not going to pay for all that, but they'll... But they just figure if they move you far away enough from something and change what, what people call you, that's good enough to start over. And for most people, it is, unless you're stupid and get in trouble and out there and getting yourself found out. For most of us, if we're willing to move away from where we are in our mind and establish the right identity, we can actually change our lives. We can, act, we can actually change our lives. If we're willing to let go of who we think we are and remember who we really are, we will act much different. But we only, just like that bank, we want them to say, no, this is who I am. No, there's no nicknames in here now. Don't shorten it. No, this is the whole name. This is my middle name, last name. Here's my address. I want everything proper so I can get access to this account, whether I'm putting it in or taking it out. Well, I'm getting access to life, putting in or taking out. You have to have the right identity if you want to have the right experience. And we are in witness protection. We're changing our identity. We're just moving around. We're over here. Yes, I am. No, I'm not. Yes, I am. What do you think? Yes, I am. I'm leaving. Yes, I am. Can I come out? We're, we're changing our identity constantly. For no, And it's not, it's not producing anything valuable or proper or important or correct. because also the lack of consistency in the identity so you're always switching so you're never choosing okay an identity is just like a person it is a person right a person has an identity an identity is non-physical a person is physical and i what's another word for what's another word for identity What's another word for that? And you're mentally, mentally, what's another word for identity? Persona? Okay, Being? what is your persona? Oh, Jojo, were you gonna say something? I was just saying you're being. You're being? Okay. Where you where you live, what is that called? Where you live. They say, I say, Giovanni, where do you live? What would you um, say? Uh, Dallas, Texas. Okay, you say, so Dallas, Texas. So what is what is Texas? A state. State. Mm. Oh, gotcha, coach. Mm. State. Right. Your, your, when people say, I got to get my mind right, right? When they talk about mindset or state of mind, what they're talking about essentially is a state. They're talking about your consciousness and what state it's in. Where is it? What is it believing itself to be? What is it thinking? How does it identify? 
What is it identifying itself as? Right now, one of the easiest things we can see is every one of you on this screen that I can see, your state, what you have identified, your consciousness has identified several things I can see. Your gender, your color, your name, all of those are coming from your consciousness and they're all varying levels of identity, just different aspects of that identity. I am this, I am this, I am this, I am this, I am this old, I am this, I am not that. I am not this, I am not that. I live in, Giovanni said, I live in Dallas, Texas. She didn't name all 50 states and all 50 some states and all thousand cities in the state. This is where I live specifically. Your state of mind is where you're living specifically. I was talking to my brother earlier and he's saying it was raining out there. I'm in California, it's not raining. So two things can be true at once, but, but for two different people in two different states, we're gonna have two different experiences even, on, even in the same physical plane. And just like people move places to change their lives, whether it's for better opportunities or for something more, something less, something different, something better, something not as bad, whatever you want to call it, we move physically to have a different experience because we realize the experience we want is not where we are. We can't get it or it doesn't exist where we are, one or both. The state of mind that we're in, the consciousness that, that is that we're now saying, I am, right? Whatever you put here is the state. And whatever state that you're in, is it raining? Is it snowing? Is it crowded? Are the taxes high? Do people take public transportation? Do people not? Do What do people do in that state? Everyone that's in your state is the same thing as a state of mind. They are, they are, they are very similar to you in the sense that they're going through a lot of the same experiences you're going through. Weather, traffic, whatever else, sales tax, the things that apply to that state that are that are a reflection of the state, not you personally, but a reflection of you personally, personally living in that state of mind. So when you say, I am smart, that's a state of mind. That state called smart or intelligent or intelligence, right, produces, has things that reflect it. They have things that come as a direct result of living there. Like Florida with the heat and the humidity, right? Like California with the traffic and the, all the other stuff, right? Like Philadelphia or Pennsylvania with all the other, every state, every location physically has things that exist because that it reflects it. it, it that's what this place does. Your state of mind is what you do. You do what you do because that is where you are in your mind. So coach, are, are emotions separate from state or are they a condition of your state? Great question. They, emotions are like the weather. They are a condition of your state, but they're not absolutely involuntary. Sometimes like in California, it starts like, it doesn't really rain in California this early, but it rains like two weeks ago. So it's, it's so it is predominantly a reflection of your state, but they it is malleable, it is changeable, but it's predominantly a reflection of that state. And you can't change it all the time. And, and for the most part, it's very similar. It stays the same, right? Like every year in cold weather states, you know it's going to snow at some point. It may be a little earlier, maybe a little later, but in California or in Florida, well, in most of California, in certain parts it snows, but for the most part in California, it doesn't really snow too much, for the most part, for the most part. There's a couple places it does, but California, Florida, we don't really have to concern ourselves with that unless we have to really go looking for it. Like California, I have to go to the mountains five hours up north. Like I have to go to Tahoe right next to us or Yosemite or Big Bear. But the point is, is that generally in states, things do can change a little bit, but generally they are the same. They are generally the same because that's what makes the state the state. If it was as erratic or sporadic, it really wouldn't be that state. It would be something else. 
if it started snowing here every January, then we might as well live in New York or Philadelphia, right? If it's going to start snowing every January, but in Florida or in California, we don't really have to concern ourselves with that, like other West, other uh, uh, East Coast, especially, and Southern, Southeastern states do. So your emotions are basically just letting you know they're almost like cities. They're just different locations within that state. They're different places. They're different types of expression within that same place. Okay. And you can so, control where you go. Right. Yes. So we have a, if we have consistent emotions, we need to change our state. Correct. To manipulate those emotions. Correct. Because they're a reflection of that emotion, just like the weather, like the people, like the culture, like the food, like the area code, right? Like the zip code. They're all reflections of that location. And there's only so much of it you can change before you need to, like a person, there's only so much you can change about a person and they still be them. There's only so much you can change about a state and it'd be the state. If you change it after a while so much, it's not that state anymore. You're now, oh, and, uh, this happens, this happens. Oh, you don't live in Texas anymore. You live in New Hampshire. That's what they do in New Hampshire, so to speak. You've moved now. The state remains. Everybody who likes to stay in Florida or California or Philadelphia or Texas, they are there and they understand that in each state, it has its own form of expression. And people in that state, emotions in that state express themselves according to the state. So there's there's some part of it that's changeable and malleable, but not significantly enough that if you want to see a real change and keep it, you have to move. You have to move if you don't like your emotions, if you don't like the way you're reacting to something. It just means your state of mind is where you're is expressing itself through your emotions. Like a driver expresses itself through blinkers on a car, right? Turn your blinker on, turning it off. Turn your windshield wipers on, turning them off. Turn your air on, turning it off. It's an expression of the occupant. I gotta call my sister. <laughs> <laughs> We could use our emotions as like a tool to let us know kind of where we're at though, right? That's correct. That is correct. That is why your emotions are almost, almost like, also they're like gauges on a car. When you get in your car and you look at your gas, how much do I have? Right. You look at your coolant, you look at your, your, your battery light, you look at whether it's on or whether it's off, you hope it stays off. But if it comes on, you can say maybe that's like, maybe you're not feeling well, or maybe you have a fever. It's like something is alerting you to something. Right, it doesn't have to be a disaster or a catastrophe, but if you don't deal with it, the light doesn't go off. Now you can click the sensor, you can take some Tylenol, you can do this or do that, but if that light either keeps coming back on or you don't know because you clicked the sensor, it's not gonna go away because you don't know why it came on. Mm -hmm. So you just because you dealt with it doesn't mean you necessarily know knew how to deal with it properly. You just didn't want to deal with it right then, right? So our emotions are great ways to let us know what state we're in. When I walk into Texas, one of my one of my good friends lives in Dallas. And when I was in the airport on the way to Atlanta, it didn't look like California. I, I hadn't seen so many cowboy boots in, in a minute, <laughs> right? California, they don't really get down like that, right? I'd seen so many big hats that weren't on women, right? right? And it wasn't Sunday, right? I've seen so many. So it's just, it's a different culture. It's a right. different way of living, right? And there's only so much that I can change and it still be Texas. Otherwise, they're gonna be like, man, if you don't want something different, go somewhere else. It's the same thing psychologically. If you want something different, states are for the people who like that place. It's for you, and if you wanna leave, that's cool. Something else is for you, but you don't destroy the state. Somebody else wants to live there. There are states of anger, sadness, depression, happiness, joy. Those are all different states of mind, right? That express themselves. And so if you don't like what's expressed, you can change it a little bit, but then there's a certain point where you have to move. What you're looking for doesn't exist here, right? Doesn't exist here. So that's a great question. Yes, you can use your emotions to get a better understanding of what state you're in. Just like when I saw those cowboy boots, I knew I wasn't in California. If I didn't know where I was, I may not have knew where I was, but I know for sure it's not California. Right. Now I'm just trying to see where it is, but I can eliminate certain places, right? New York probably, and things like that. Right. So, yes, that's how you use your emotions to 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 figure out really what state of consciousness you're in. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Great question. Any other questions before I move forward? About what we talked about so far? 
I have more questions, but I think it's more appropriate off the call because um, I just want to make sure that I, I I think that yeah, like I need to ask more questions, but just in a more personal space. Okay. Well, yeah. I I like I said I yeah like I I said it at the beginning. I'll just say it again now because there's more people here. I I never really say it or talk about it too much, just because I just don't. But a lot of people reach out and people have reached out and asked, like, do you, is this all you do or do you coach or do you teach or do you, and I don't really talk about it on here because we're in and out so quick, but I do. So anytime, if you, if you want us to work together, I coach, I uh, have consultations, I have regular coaching with people that some people every day, some people once a week, once a month, everybody's different. If I do one-on-one -on -one coaching, I do counts, uh, uh, consultations. Somebody just may want to call once and ask for advice, opinion, perspective, whatever. I have classes I teach that are on specific topics. I got parenting. I got this. I got a thousand different things, so to speak. But I do do those things. And if you're interested in me working with you, you can go to the Mental Academies, and there's all the information is there, and you can do that. And I'm just really saying it's part because you reminded me because I said at the beginning because people keep asking me, and I don't really mention it on these calls, but I do do that. So if you want to reach out or whatever, you can do that at the Mental Dot Academy. There's appointments, and times, and all the other stuff you can find that. So yes, but thank you. Any any other questions or anything? You guys let me know because I want to make sure. I have one last question, Coach. Yes. Do we need to understand our emotions? To change, you know, to change our state, can we just decide that? Because this is what I believe now: that if you want to change your state, if you want to change your situation, you can just make that decision. You don't have to analyze why you are where you are at the moment to change your state and have that be a consistent change. Can you do that? Yeah. Can you do that? Well, I. I'm learning how to do it. I'm just wondering if it's valuable to to just make the change and not understand the emotions behind what's going on that you want to change your state. So my so my answer was when I say can you do that, what I meant by that is can you do that? And what I mean by saying that is it depends on the person. Some people can, some people can't. Mm -hmm. You okay. know, there's some people who just can't let things go. Can you let things go? Yes. But there's some people who have a hard time doing that. They just do, right? Okay. And and they and what they are having a hard time letting go may be this particular thing. They may be, it may be easier to let certain things go, maybe hard to let this one go. Some people can let anything go. Some people can, can let, can't let anything go. So to answer your question, it's an individualized, can you do it? Yes, you can. The true you, yes, you can. That is why we can die because this ain't real. Just like a video game because we don't die. What we think is important, Leslie, Lucky, Mark, and Veronica, that, that body, that persona, that character dies. But like a video game, it's not real. So can we let some go? Yeah, that's why we can die because we, the true us, lives forever. But in our humanity, right, we have a heart. Can we do that still? Yes, because that's who we really are. But while we're trying to figure out and remember who we really are, some things may be a little harder to do that. So uh, that is more of an individualized thing. Can you do it overall? Yes. It is basically a thing they call in, in, in therapy, they call it um, they call it choice theory. It's essentially meaning that everything is a choice. You always have a choice. And depending on the choice you make, it's like those books back in the day, choose your own adventure, right? Well, if you if you want them to go to the mall, turn to this page. Right. If you want them to not go to the mall, turn to this page and the story goes off, depending on what choice you make. Choice theory is essentially saying that whatever you can, you always have a choice. That is your divine gift to always choose that you can choose in and out, good or bad, life and death. I set before you life and death. Right. So, yes, overall, overarchingly, yes. For an individual, everyone may not be in a position to believe that. So depending on the individual, they may need to figure out, well, why do I feel this? Why do I think this about this? Because they may be, leaving, may be believing a lie that is so hurtful to them. And once they realize it's a lie, it may be easier for them to drop it. But if they just try to walk away from it, it's almost like a relationship and you got ghosted. Some people just have a, they have a hard time letting go of something because they feel like it was taken from them. 
They didn't get a chance to see it go or wonder why it happened. They didn't get to talk to the person. It was just over. So it just depends on what type of person you are. To answer your question, as is it possible? Yes. Can people do it? Yes. Do people do it? Absolutely. But as each individual person, you kind of have to know who you are. Can you do that? Yeah. But can you do that? It depends on the person. It depends on the situation they're talking about. But my advice to most people is, it's better just to change your mind. Mm -hmm. You just spend so much because all you're doing now is putting so much attention on what you don't want. You're not putting enough attention on what you do want. So that even though you want to change, you're not really spending enough time on it in your mind being what you want it to be. You're, you're making more of a choice to stay as you are and keep thinking as you're thinking more than what you want to become now, right? And But a lot of people just have so, they've spent so much time in it, you know, that they have a hard time just completely hacking it off. So you kind of have to, you know, you kind of have to pull them a little bit at a time. And if I were talking to a person, the first couple of sessions would probably be all about their past or all about their misery, whatever else it is. So then the next session, I try to put in five minutes of just a new thing, then six minutes, then seven minutes, then 10 minutes, then 12 minutes. And before they know it, they're talking about what they want more than they don't want. But it's hard for a lot of people to go from zero to 100 because they've been so conditioned to talk about what they don't want, mm -hmm. what they don't like, what happened. Look what he did. Look what she did. And let me tell you, girl, let me tell you this, right? <laughs> and Lord, let me, man, let me tell you what he did. Let me tell you what this did over here, right? We're so conditioned. We put so much energy in that, right? So it's hard a lot of times for people to make that U-turn, like the Dukes of Hazard or like Fast and Furious. A lot of people need a three-point turn. But that you turn to your point to answer your question directly, yes. Mm -hmm. And I tell most people directly, yes. But even if I tell them that, I'm always prepared for them not to necessarily be able to do it because one, people don't know they can. They Even if you tell them they can, they're like, Are you sure, because this has really been bothering me for a long time. <laughs> like you don't realize how much he did or she did, or you don't realize how broke I am. So it doesn't matter whether it's a relationship or money or your health. People are so, and even it's the, it's the right word, it's just unfortunate because people are so invested mm -hmm. in their current moment that it's hard for them to leave it, even though it's causing all of their misery, right. even though it's just the expression of their discontent. Mm -hmm. But they're so, they tried on the outfit so much, they wear it so well, they're just used to it. Let me ask you, let me get, ask you all a question. Have you ever been so you know, have you ever, okay, so it's two questions. First, have you ever gone somewhere and forgot your jacket or forgot your wallet? And now you're in the mall or you're at the bank and you got somewhere and you're like, oh, shoot, right? And you forgot something. Has that happened to anybody? Yeah. Right? Okay. All right, watch this, watch this. Have you ever gone throughout your day and forgot to worry? Yeah. On vacation. And then you looked up, you're like, oh, shoot, I forgot. I didn't pay. I forgot. I didn't, I didn't. You forgot. You realized that you hadn't worried that morning. And you forgot, like, you left your worry at home or you let, or your worry wasn't in your mind for a couple of hours and you almost panicked because you forgot to worry. You're like, oh, shoot, I haven't worried about my bills today. What am I doing? Oh, oh, yeah, 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 I can't, yeah, I and like, it makes you feel better to bring this thing with you because you forgot it, right? You forgot this thing that you have, that you're used to doing, but you realize, man, I haven't thought about that bill in three or four hours, right? And you realize, well, wait a minute. Oh, shoot, I haven't thought about that bill. And you feel like, you feel like you forgot something. You feel like you left it at home and you, and you almost start to panic. Like, well, well, where is my stress? Why did I leave it? Right? Did somebody take my stress? <laughs> right? Who took my stress? Right? Who took my stress? Somebody, somebody take my stuff without asking. <laughs> right? I told you to ask me first. Right? Now I have to start hiding it. Right? So, you know, just a lot of times my point is, is that people are so invested in their current moment. They're so invested in their belief. And that is really, just really a reflection of our divinity. When we become so one when we become one with something that we start to identify ourselves with that, it's like it's like putting on skin. It's like putting on a, an outfit. You become one with it. And it's so hard for people who've had this outfit on for a long time in any area of life to let go of something so quickly. So I, I tell them, yes, you can. But for a lot of people, 
it, it's like baby steps. It's like, it, you know, they're like a toddler, like a baby learn how to walk. First they stand up and they're like, I'm really doing it, right? <laughs> then they walk a little bit and then they're out of here like this, right? And then you gotta start moving the tables around so they don't bust their head on the thing so they don't slip on this or trip on that, right? But every day they get a little better, 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 right? And so to answer your question again a thousand times, yes, you absolutely can stand up and walk. Yes, you can. You can walk away from that today by saying, I am no longer that, I am this. Right now. Right now. I am is right now. I am is not tomorrow. I am is I am is right now. Even if I am is going somewhere tomorrow, I am is thinking that, assuming that, saying that right now. Your present is the present. Your present future is the present. Your present past is the present. Whatever you're thinking about, whether it's in your future, so to speak, or in your past, it's present that you're doing. Mm. Everything is always now. Everything is always now. So can you walk away from that? Can you say, I am no longer broke. I'm, I'm wealthy. I'm no longer sick. I'm healthy. What does it say? Let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. Because the weak and the poor is an experience, but it's not a truth. It's an experience like we talked about. Uh, we talked about and Giovanni was really into that, one, right? Whatever we, whatever we can change, it's not the truth. It just may be true. It may be truly happening. Two plus two is five. Did I write that down? Yeah, I truly did that. I truly did it. But is it the truth? No, because I can change it, right? Two plus two is four. Whether I like it or not, it doesn't matter. If I, whether I wrote it down or not, it is the truth. It's not changing. Anything that we can change lets us know that it's not the truth. So if we can become something, we can unbecome. If we're not what we want to be, we can become what we want to be. If it's, that means we have that as our ability. Choice theory, the ability to choose. We always have. So I know that was a long answer to a short question, but I think that's super important. Thank you, super Coach. Important. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. All right. And so I always have a lot of different things to talk about. So a lot of different ways I can go, depending on how the class goes. So I'm going to go back to something I was explaining this week in conversation. So this is a pyramid a little slanted i i really was too concerned about the bottom but okay okay so i want us to i want us to under i want us to get something what what we what we call prayer what that is is designed to move your state of mind it's designed to move you from the state of mind where snow doesn't exist to the state of mind where snow does exist, right? Just like you move from one state to another for a job or one state to another for better schooling for your kids or because you want more weather, better weather, or you want more of this, or but you're moving from a place where what you desire doesn't exist to a place where it does exist. You're moving states of mind, just like you see all the states on the map and all those available are available to live. And depending on what type of life you want to live, you move to that state. Just imagine that's the same thing psychologically. We are all living in a state of mind, just like we're all living in a state in this country. Let's just say. And depending on where we're living, that is what our experience is like. Like I said earlier, my brother said it was raining out there. It's not raining out here. What he said is true, but it's not true for me because we're not in the same state. When somebody says it's flu season, and so I know I get sick every season, that's the state of mind they're living in. I don't have that problem it's because I'm not in that state. But if I lived in that state, guess what? Right. I would have that problem. I'll be saying the same thing my brother said. It's raining. If I'm in that state physically, I'm going to experience all the things that everyone in that state experiences. If I'm in the same state psychologically, I'm going to experience all the things that everyone in that state psychologically experiences. The law is no respecter of persons. The state of consciousness is no respecter of persons. In Philadelphia, where my brother is, is where my brother is specifically, it, where he is specifically, is raining. Everybody in that place is getting rained on unless they're inside. And everybody in that place, whether inside or outside, it's raining. Nobody gets a break or a pass. And a state of consciousness, whatever is expressed in that state of consciousness, is happening to everyone who occupies it. So the key then is not to change the state, as far as what's happening in it, the key is to change where, what state you live in if you don't like what happens here. 
Does that under does that make sense so far? Yes. Yes. Okay. So prayer is essentially changing the state of mind that you're in to go from the state of mind you're in that does not allow what you want to be or do or have. That state of mind does not provide that. It doesn't exist there. Prayer is changing your state psychologically to the place where you as a person are now in the place that has this thing. Does that make sense so far? Where this thing already exists. You're not creating anything. Creation is finished. You're just going to a place where it exists. Like, has anybody ever been to a store to get some to get something and they ran out? Right? But it's the Super Bowl or it's your little, your little nephew's birthday party. You need to get the chips or the ice. So then what do you do? Go to another store. Say it again. Go to another store. You go to another. If you are in a place in your life where what is happening is not what you want or like, your happiness has run out, right, so to speak, you go to another store. You go to another state of consciousness by saying, I now want to be this. Your desires are nothing but, there, there, there are a lot of different things, but they are just reflections of things that you would like in that state. Better weather, better people, so to speak, maybe less taxes, maybe no sales tax, maybe, but your desires are, are things that are, are, are trying to get you to move. Your desires are, are there to get you to move from one state to another. That is how you experience different things and the things you want. Your desires are things that you want to experience, but they're there to get you to move, to impel you to move. But not, but to move mentally. States, if it's not here, go to another one, to where it is. You don't waste any time, according to Leslie's point, or to Leslie's point, you don't waste any time walking around the store talking about, I don't know why they don't have it. I don't know why I feel like this. I don't know why. You can do that if you want to, but it's it's not very beneficial. Somebody, you can wait until, to, you can wait an hour for the manager to come out and say, well, the truck doesn't have it. Mm -hmm. right or the truck didn't come today or they or it's in the back but we can't you can wait for an answer but you waited a whole hour when you could have went two blocks down and went to the other grocery store and moved on right. right so it's just like going to a different grocery store if you walk in and they don't have the chips that you need for your nephew's birthday party go to the next one you don't waste any time asking for a whole bunch of reasons and why and and this and is this about me and is this personal and all no you just go to the next store you go to the next state of mind so prayer is designed what you would call prayer is designed to say okay i want to access a different level of consciousness a different state of mind where what i desire exists so here's what i mean let's say you're over here right and you want better health. <clears throat> so the thing you want is over here. The you you want to be is over here. So let's just say this is unhealthy and this is healthy. Now, so you have something you want, but you're over here. Now, you want to be over here. But the reason you're over here is because of all the things we talk about, right? What you think, what you feel, what you believe to be true, the information you have, the beliefs you have, the state of mind you're in now. The collection of all those things put you, our reflection, or put you in the state of mind you're in. So unhealthy. So you have done all you could do with this state of mind. So now... When you're here and you say, I've done all I could do over here, but I want to get here. So now what you do is you look up. You're saying, okay, I want to look, I'm prayer, like I'm looking up. I'm saying, okay, I want to access something higher. So let's say prayer is, we're just going to use this word, right? But it's at the top. It's the thing that you're now looking to help you get to the other side. The difference between unhealthy and healthy is what? 
what what changes? What needs to be changed? What changes? Identity. Okay, which is what? How you identify yourself as, and we and we use Giovanni for that expert with that. What is that? What is identity? What's another word for that? Consciousness. Consciousness, she said. Consciousness. State. State. Oh, your okay. state. state. Your consciousness is consciousness is who you are. The state you in or you're in is how you're expressing who you are. Right. Giovanni's Giovanni, whether she goes to Africa, Europe, Asia, Texas, it doesn't matter where she is, she's still Giovanni. Right? But where she is is how she's able to express herself. There are certain things you can't do in certain places, things you can do, but you're still the same you. So you're all, we're all just consciousness. How we choose to express that consciousness, right, is what our name is and all the different things. And now the state of consciousness where we are. Okay. So these are nothing but unhealthy is just a state. It's a state of consciousness. It's a state of, it's not consciousness, it's a state of it. Consciousness is everything. Now we're choosing. America is everything, but you still have to choose. What state you live in. Healthy is a state. Healthy is a state of what? What is the state of healthy? Health. Health. You want to move from the state, you want to move to the state of health. You want to move out of the state of unhealth. Unhealthy and health are unhealthy and healthy are just a state. Poor health and good health are just states. So, but in the state of mind you're in, you don't have the state of mind to live like this. You don't. That's why you don't. So in order to live like that, you have to move. Does that make sense so far? You have to move in mind. You have to go from the state of unhealth to the state of health. You have to pack up your, your truck, pack up your loading truck and get it moving, right? Change your state of mind, your consciousness, change what you're thinking. So what, so prayer, right? Doesn't have to be called that. I'm just using a word that we all generally understand. Prayer means the ability to change your mind, the ability to choose choice, Prayer is choice, the ability to choose whether you stay or whether you go, what you are or what you aren't, what you are or what you aren't, what you don't want to be or what you do want to be. Prayer is the ability to choose between those states. The ability to choose, we call what? What is the ability to choose? It is the truest form of what? Freedom. Freedom. Oh, okay. Freedom. Let's go. Right? Freedom. So essentially, prayer is what? Freedom. Freedom. Prayer is freedom. I'm not talking about the old school the way we're talking about it, you got to be on your, you know, your knees and your hands glass and the candles and the beads and facing a certain way. No, I don't mean that. <laughs> Prayer is the ability to choose, to change. That is your truest form of freedom. When people say I'm free or I want to be free, freedom is not physical. It's expressed physically. Freedom is mental. It is psychological. Just like fear, just like worry, just like joy, just like they are things that are expressed. Right? Your freedom is the ability to choose. Prayer is your freedom. It's your psychological, non-physical form of freedom. It's the thing that creates the physical thing you experience. Express, I'm sorry. Prayer is an experience. The ability to choose is an experience. That experience is expressed. Monique has a question. Yes. Okay. So can we say that prayer is asking for awareness, which creates the ability to choose because we now know that another state exists? 
Yes. And what and what triggers your awareness? Knowing what I don't want. And I because know that what I you don't, don't want, what does it make you? What does it do? It gives me the ability to know that there has to be another way, that something else has to be available because this this ain't it. Right. It lets you know what you do want. Right. It clarifies more what you, the more intensely you don't want something, the more clear it is on the other side of what you do. When you're not really, when you're hungry and you're not really hungry, you can eat now, maybe eat now, or you can kind of wait. Your the intensity, the clarity of where you go to eat is not as crystallized. It's not as pristine. Right. Mm -hmm. But when you're starving, right. And you know, you don't want to be hungry anymore. You're like, man, get me something now. You get more clear. I get me even if it's I don't know what I want, but I know I want it now. So this gas station, pull up, right? <laughs> or, or, you get more clear, right? Your feeling, or your your desire, or your 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 desire about the, the specific, or just the outcome gets more clear, becomes more intense. So your desire is what you're talking about, your awareness. Your desire is the reflection of your awareness saying, I'm aware that there's another option. I'm aware that there's something else out here. And your desire is the reflection of that awareness. It's the, that desire is that desire is your physical, is your physical awareness. It's your mind's awareness. Awareness is a reflection of your consciousness. Your desire is a reflection of your, of your humanity. So your consciousness is always turning that into a desire. It's, it's the interpretation of, of, of awareness. Your consciousness is aware of being something called Monique. Your consciousness is aware of wanting to be this. So the desire that you have is the reflection of that awareness that is coming to you. And it's designed like a prayer is designed to trigger your human will. That is the freedom we have in humanity and our humanity is the will, is the ability to choose even to our satisfaction or destruction. That's true freedom. That's why it says in the book, choose this day who you whom you serve. Choose every day you have the choice. There's only one other thing that chooses. Who is that? What do we call that? What have we called that? Hmm. You got There's me. only one other thing that chooses. What do we call that? What have we called that historically? God. God. Hmm. Doesn't matter. What we're just that's just the name we all understand that we're most familiar with. Doesn't matter what you call it. But God. God is the only one that chooses. The so-called devil didn't get to choose. It couldn't even stay in its own crib. It got thrown out, right? God was like, yeah, out. Doesn't even get to choose where it lives. Doesn't get to choose anything. The only thing that chooses is God. That's it. But we are made in the image and likeness. That's why we get to choose. Our humanity, our free will is made in the image and likeness of who we really are within this body. That's who we really are. We're still God choosing, including the choice to be human meaning to have a human experience. That is our power. That is really where we are. That is really who we are. That's why we have the ability to choose. No other thing can choose on this planet but humanity as far as to be or not be, to remain or not remain. We are the only ones, but we're the only ones made in the image of likeness. That's why it's saying it. It's not religious or spiritual or deep. It's just the truth. It's been packaged as that. It's been sold as that. It's been told as that, but it's not. Guess who the heathen is? The robber and the thief. Guess who that is? Who is that? Ourself. Me. Who is Self. that? Yourself. Huh? Self. Self. Who is that? Ego. Who is that? Who, who, who is it? Why are we complicating God. it? Who is it? God. Consciousness. <laughs> Who is, what do we call that? I'm getting ready to throw the marker. <laughs> I, 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 I am. Huh? I am. And what do we, and what do people call that? God. God. 
the thief, the murderer, the liar, the cheater, it's all the same. There's only God. That's it. We're all... Help keep the marker in his hand. Because I'm started. Oh, God, I didn't want to do that, but I did it anyway. Okay, watch this. You I don't know who, but somebody did say God. But I yes. barely said God. Oh, remember, okay. You know how you're at the car. You know how you at the carnival, right? Back in the day, when we we're you know, at the carnival, and you ride that ride with all the swings on it. Yeah. Right, and you're out here with all the swings. You got your little chair, and you got your little. Okay. This is Giovanni, Leslie, Monique, Veronica, Marcus, Mona, Lucky. All of this. We're all. This is all of us. We all are individualized. And we all think we're out here doing it. But what are we all attached to? God, the source. The God, the source. It doesn't matter. You can call it whatever you want. But yes, yes. So that means whatever this person does, Giovanni, all of us, whatever all of we do, all of us are doing, if we're attached to the source, who are we then? Then who's doing it? Source. We're doing it. We're God. Yeah, it. And would it, and would it, what did this other person on this swing, what did Jay call Jesus? What did Jesus say? Jesus was, according to Monique, right, the awareness in the sense of this person was aware that they really were this person. Everybody else thinks they're this. They think they're somewhere else. They're going down this way. Everybody else is going the opposite way. They're looking down or looking out. This person looked up. They realized this is who I am. Even though I'm in this body, I know this is who I am. I know where I came from. Mm. That's the only reason it can do all the things that everyone else can't. You can't get rid of depression and this cat can get out of a grave? <laughs> coach, this is what I, Coach, wait, you're going too far, Coach. Like, you, you, you just you busting all of us over the head. Like, literally, when I eat, listen, this is what I'm saying. When I eat raw, and I mean only produce uh -huh. this is the conscious this consciousness is is no brainer consciousness when uh -huh. i eat foods that have gone through processes and and different journeys before they come to my plate or before they come to my body mm -hmm. this is where the confusion where the arrows point down where you're saying we think we're down here this is where the confusion lies with sparkle bailey when i eat properly my brain is there's no convincing me otherwise of my God nature. I've mm -hmm. been exactly where you're talking about. I am Jesus. I am God. Mm -hmm. I practice that lifestyle or that mentality. I practice that mentality. But then when my actions don't line up, the emotions get in the way, the state, the hopping states and things like that gets in the way. And it seems more complicated than it truly is. But a lot mm -hmm. of us struggle to understand how do we, how am I God? How am I as powerful as Jesus? Like you said, you can't get out of depression, but this man can roll a stone away and raise himself from the, from the dead. Like the reality is there's so many of us that are just like distracted with everything you're saying. We're just, we're allowing it to distract us. Mm -hmm. But the reality is it's a clear path to the, the God behaviors and the God like thoughts um, and the movements that, you know, God makes the freedoms, all these things you're explaining. It's a, it's a direct road to it just having the community to remember, like this is helping the God in me. These meetings help feed the God in me. So that's why I come. That's why I invite my children to come and my friends are here uh, because I need my community on that God mentality. I need my community to expand. So I invite people to these calls. Monique is here, um, um, Latoya is here. And the, the reason why is because I need my community to expand so that I participate more on that side of things rather than the helpless victim side of life. And so a lot of people that I know, they don't even understand how it's you're you're a hero to me simply because you can say this without conviction. The people in my world, you can't say you're God. You can't say that to them. Right. This is what makes me feel like I need to move in different ways in my life i need to move because like you you don't tell people in this in this world like you don't tell people you are god because they'll look at you like you're um blaspheming the bible and it's just all confusion attached to that but what you're saying i completely resonate with and i just had to share that um, my tangent is over thank y'all no I always appreciate it because no matter how much that's the whole point of coming on saturday right is for all of us to come is to take whatever resonates with you and apply it in your life like I said, it's not a sermon, it's not a seminar, it's not a lecture. This is something for 
when the light comes on for you, whatever resonates for you, for you to take it and take it up out of here and run with it and roll with it. If this person right here, this person, that this being that we call that, right, that we call God, is controlling this whole show. However fast this thing is going, who's controlling that? The source. God. Right? Yeah. yeah. Whoever, and, and right? And that is you. I am. All of you say it. That is all of you. All of us are this. And this is called non-physical, right? This is called physical. This is what we call humanity. Each one of these individually is called a human. All of us collectively are called humanity. But all of us are being powered by this consciousness. I am. That's why you say it all the time. That is you. It's not God. You're not God in the, the, the thing that's looking that you're looking at in the mirror, that you're bathing and brushing the teeth. That's just a body. That's not you. That's what we have to understand. That's not you. That is yours. It's a possession. It is not your identity, but it is what you've identified yourself as. Does, it, doesn't everybody on here think they're free when they're on here? Like they think they got their own little seat. Then they think they're on here. Nobody's sitting there looking up saying, wow, that's sure turning this fast. Nobody's looking up thinking about that. Uh, Sparkle Bailey put on the chat, if God is the source of creation and he created us, we are God and carry the abilities he carried. Uh, yes, do me a favor. Go on Google and uh, when you get a chance and look up um, where it says, does it uh, say ye are gods? Right. Where it was. Okay. Coach, the thought that just came to my head is the 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 thought process of being separate separated for God from God being separate from God is interesting. When the first the first thing that happens when people get in trouble, life starts going too fast. You know, even if you're riding a ride at the fair like you're describing, when things get out of hand, the first thing we say is God help me. Yeah, right. Oh God, right. <laughs> Can you, that's right. Can you go back though? Like, pick another one. Because uh, it'll be, yeah, like that one, that way. That, okay, so this is Jesus talking to the people who are who are wanting to stone him. And he said, well, which one of these works are you stoning me for? And they said, well, for blasphemy. You're, you're saying that you're God, right? And he said, what does it say? I have said, ye are gods. All, and all of you are children of the most high. All these children of the most high are these little swings right here. When you're on that little swing on the carnival, that's that's children of the most high. But all of you are gods. You're all attached to the thing at the top. What does it say? But ye shall die like men and fall like one of the princes. You die like men, like a man, like a human, like humanity. Humanity dies. God does not. Meaning the in the bodies die. The bodies need a spirit, meaning need a power, need a consciousness. That is God. That is I am. That is you. All of us say I am. So your I am is what makes you the word that religious people call it is God. I am is the name. That is the self-identified name of God. That is the name it said. It said, my name is I am. That is my name unto all generations. People have been saying it since the beginning of time. They will say it forever and doesn't matter what country you're in, doesn't matter what whatever else it is. This is who you are. So your I am is controlling your swing. So when your swing, your life is going too fast, when it's going out of control, when you when you act like you can't stop the ride, if you can't stop the ride, how's that gonna work? How are you gonna go to the amusement park, get on the ride, and the machine operators say, oh, I can't stop it. How's that going to work out? If you can't stop it, who's supposed to stop this ride? How are we going to get off this roller coaster? You're the operator. God, I am. You, first person, are what makes Giovanni, Monique, Latoya, Veronica. It's what makes this swing go. Your consciousness is making your swing, your life go. 
The speed of it is going according to I am, what you would call God. It's going according to I am, your awareness. That's what's powering everything. Now, just like driving a car, you're the driver, but you have to decide how fast you drive. You have to decide how slow you drive, which way you go, right? So, but if you're the only one behind the wheel and you say, I just can't help myself, what is that going to do for you in the car? You rolling up to a red light. I just can't help myself. If somebody's in the passenger seat, they're going to say, what does that mean? Right? They're going to be like, if you can't help it, we all going down. You are the driver. This is the driver. This is the machine operator. This is the, this is the ride operator. Your consciousness is your ride operator. You are the individual in the swing. The swing is your body. You are in it. And you have named your body, Leslie, Monique, Latoya, Giovanni, Mona, Marcus, Sparkle, Amanda, Veronica. Uh, you have named it. But you are the operator. And it's going according to you. Just like your car is going according to you as the driver. Your life is going according to you. It's being propelled from something that you don't look at or see. But it's being propelled from the top. Just like those swings at the carnival. That is God. That's a machine operator. That is I am. That is your consciousness. So now, according to your consciousness, that's the operator. So if you have a machine operator and they're on the phone and they keep letting the roller coaster go around or they're too busy or they're too sad or they're too sick, the machine doesn't stop until somebody stops it. So your life is not going to stop or it is going according to as fast, as good, as happy, as sad, as mad, as bad, as high, as low as the operator is operating. Your I am your awareness is operating your physical experience. That is why the one person in this carousel of rides, so to speak, is looking up saying, man, I wonder how this is working. That's what you call Jesus. The person who was aware that, hey, there's more to this than me. This thing isn't just going around for no reason. Something's making this happen. It was aware of what made it happen. Therefore, it understood where the source was. So it understood that as this goes, it was going. That's why this mind said, I I and my father are one. The swing and the thing at the top that the swings are attached to are one. Your outer experience is a reflection of your inner experience. The swings don't start before the button is pushed. The swings can't swing on their own, start or stop on their own. Your physical body does not start or stop on its own. It doesn't, it's not born or it does, it's never born or does it die on its own. It didn't come here on its own. It doesn't go out on its own. You decide when it comes, when it goes. You made those decisions just because you don't remember it. You ride on that swing just because you don't see the operator don't mean somebody's not operating. it. It's not happening on its own. So when people have a hard time believing their God, I understand that because I did too. But I understood why I had a hard time because I was believing that it was something on the outside of you. I was believing, ain't whether it's something, I believe I'm now taking that person's place in the sky, or I'm believing that it's the body that I bathe or that I feed. I'm thinking that's what you're talking about. That's not what we're talking about. We are talking about the thing that makes your body alive. We're talking about the you inside that is looking through your eyes, that is making your body stand or sit or lay or rise. That is God. That is why it's called I am. Didn't say, well, what's your name? Leroy. <laughs> Didn't say that. Didn't say that. Didn't say that. <laughs> right? It didn't say Mariani's. Shout out to Puerto Rico. <laughs> didn't say that. It didn't, it didn't name a name like that. Right? But what does it say? What did you when they said, when they asked Jesus, hey, where is God? Where is it out there? What did he say? If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Does anybody remember that? Right, yep. Veronica? Yep. If you've seen me, that way, I want you to know what... I'm looking for another one? Yeah, just ex go okay. backward on that one. Just go out of that one and then just pick another one. Yeah, there you go. What do you mean? If, yeah, and then just new search. Okay. And Google it. If you see me, yeah. If you you've seen the father, if you've seen me, you've seen me. me, you've seen the father. Yeah, there you go. Right, just so that everybody can see what this person is talking about. Yeah, there you go. Perfect. 
Okay. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, that one's fine. Should be fine. Okay, yeah. Okay. So, and what does it say? Right? You share the screen perfect. What does it say? Jesus answered. So this person on the carousel answered. Everybody else is asking this person, man, what in the heck are you talking about? But this person is the only one looking up. This person is the only one that knows what's really happening. Everybody else thinks that there's something else, but this person knows who it is. So they said, so he answered, he said, do you know me? He said, don't you know me, Philip? Even, I, even after I have been with you such a long time, anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? So he's saying, anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. And the next verse, I don't know if you can see it where it says context. Yeah, go to the next one. It says, don't you believe that I am in the Father? I am is in the Father. I am, what you call yourself, I am, is in the Father. I am is the Father. And the Father is in me. I am in it, and it is in me. How could it not be me? I am is in you, and you are I am. I'm saying it all the time. How could it not be you? And the I am is, is called the Father. The Father we call God, not male, right? Just like Mother Nature is not woman, right? It's just attributes attributed to a gender, but it's not a gender-based thing, right? The words I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority. So when we say we're not saying we're God like I'm I'm lucky, I'm God. I'm Leslie, I'm God. No, that's not what we're saying. We're not speaking on our own authority. Rather, it's the Father, it's the consciousness, it's the awareness in us, it's our I am that's singing out and crying out and saying, man, don't you know who we are? What are you doing? Hmm. Rather, it is the Father living in me. It's the thing living in you that is what? Who is doing his work. Your consciousness is doing the work. That's why if you don't change your mind, you can't change your life. That's why the life you have is a physical reflection of your mind. Because your mind is doing the work, not your hand. What does it say? It's the Father living in me who is doing his work. The Father is God. I am in you. I am in Veronica. I am in Monique. I am in Leslie. I am in Marcus, in Mona. I am in every human, whether you know it or not, whether you don't want to call yourself God or not, you don't have to call yourself anything. Just know. But it, but but if if you do want to call yourself that, or if somebody else called you that, why are you denying it when you say I am anyway? Mm. You're saying you are anyway. So I want you to understand. So when we say prayer is moving consciousness, is what does it mean? It says it's the Father in me who is doing the work. The the I am in you is doing the work. It's not you. That's why you're grinding. Because humanity has to do that. God doesn't do that. It's Come not on, necessary for God to do that. Come on, coach. Right? Talk about the grind. Talk about the right? grind. grind. That's it, right? We like it's, it's the grind. The grind is humanity forgetting who it is. Therefore, it has to work much harder than it should. Mm -hmm. It's what happens when your kids don't listen to you and you told them don't do that and they touch the stove. <laughs> or they, you know, they, they keep playing and they slip and fall when you told them don't go out there with their church, good church clothes on and they get caught. Humanity is like the prodigal son when it leaves its, um, okay, will you yeah, pull it back up for me? The Google, I appreciate it. Okay. Um, Google, same thing. Uh, and then, Oh, you go. Um, what to say? Let me separate my things from my father. Something like that. Shows it. Self. Let me see my thing from my father. Okay, let me try that. Yeah. Let me try that. And go down. I know it's got to be now. Um. Yeah. Um. Uh, um. Uh. It's the, it's the prodigal. It's the prodigal son. Um, he's he, okay. Go the go the prodigal son. Which I want to show you show you guys. Oh, what that is. What uh, just put up there the prodigal son in the Bible. Yeah, I'll tell you. Yeah, there you go. Oh. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Um. Yes. Go back there. Okay. Okay. Wait. Wait. That's that's. Uh, okay. Okay. Watch this. 
And verse 11, if you look at it, right? It said, Jesus continued, there was a man who had two sons. The younger one said, the younger one said to his father, father, give me my share of the estate. So he divided his property between them. So, the, this is the prodigal son. At the end, um, look on verse, look on, okay, and then look on verse, look on verse 16. He said, he longed to fill his stomach with the pods that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. The next one, he said, when he came to his senses, he said, how many of my father's hired servants have food to spare? And here I am starving to death. So at the end, he's starving to death. At the end, he's starving. Above that, right, he's, he's doing what he is. He filled his stomach with the pods that the pigs were eating. So he was eating pig food. He was eating pig food. And then, right, so, and then, and above that, he said, what was, so how did he get here? In this story, how did this person get here? What started it all? Maybe like the know-it-all mentality or a greed mentality, maybe? Oh, okay, okay. It's I don't mean, I, don't, I don't know. Okay, but what, yeah, but that, that meant, yes, but what started, what started the chain of events? The son's he, desire to separate from his father. Yeah, he made a choice to separate. So who is the father? Consciousness. God. Yeah. Consciousness, God, I am. He yeah. changed his identity. He was first the the and the other uh, there's then the different books of the Bible they explain it differently but this is basically the son of a king the son of a king the son you are you are the son you are the son of a king you are God's sons of the Most High that's who you are so when you change your identity the first place that led to him starving. At the end, he starved because at the beginning, he separated himself. He started thinking he was really Leslie. He was really Mona, Marcus, Sparkle. We, when we really think we're something different, we're separating ourselves. And that is where starving comes. Grinding comes. That is where depression comes, meaning that is where we become eligible for all of the perils of life because we're not thinking as the king. We're not thinking as who we are. We're not thinking as I am. What does it say? The earth of the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The earth is the Lord's, the Lord thy God. The Lord and God are one. It is the laws of consciousness. Being expressed physically, they call Jesus the Lord, but it's just the physical expression of the non-physical, which is consciousness. That's why I said, I am my father one. If you've seen me, you've seen the father. Your consciousness is being expressed in Leslie, in all of you. So when I see you, I see God. I see the gods, the Elohim. One, that big carousel made up of me, all the little swings. That's it. You're attached to that. That's who you really are. When you separate yourself, if you're on that carousel, right, and that swing comes off, what happens? <laughs> if that little arm <laughs> breaks off that swing, what happens? You go spiraling out of control. Right? Well, what, what do you think depression is? Mm. What do you think anxiety is? What do you think cancer is? What do you think poverty is? What do you think stress is? What do you think these things are? That's not, that's not spiraling out of control. It is right. It makes perfect sense. It's a, but the but the reason that happened is because the arm broke off, right? Because we lost connection to the thing that was controlling the whole situation. When we separate ourselves from who we are consciously, when we start believing we're something else, we're black, we're white, we're a woman, 
we're a man, we're a Republican, we're a Democrat. When we start to separate ourselves as something else, the first place we do that is in mind. The first place we separate ourselves from health is in our mind. The first place you separate yourself from wealth is in your mind. The first place you separate yourself from peace is in your mind. Nothing can be taken from you. I'm not going to make you work anymore because I already, right? I won't go to Google on you. But what does it say? That's why I said, no man takes my life from me. I have the power to lay it down, take it up again. When they're getting ready to crucify him, the Pontius Pilate said, Hey, don't you know I have the power to crucify you? You need to answer my questions. He said, you wouldn't be, you wouldn't have that power if my father in heaven didn't give it to you. It means my father, he said, my father in heaven. That means the consciousness in me is giving you the right to do to me what I'm allowing you to do because that's working for my plan. You have to crucify me essentially so I can go on this cross, die, go in the grave, raise up again. So the only reason you're doing this because I'm allowing you to do it. The only thing, the only things that happen to you are what you allow. You just don't realize it because you separate yourself in consciousness and you think that you have the ability as the flesh to handle things. You don't. That's why he said, it's not me. It's my father who lives in me doing the work. Your, your consciousness is doing the work. And when you separate yourself in consciousness by, but you can't ever do that, but you do that by believing you're something different than what you are. And as soon as you do that, you end up like something different than what you are. Sleeping with the pigs, starving. You sleep with depression, starving. Anxiety, starving. Poverty, starving. Cancer, starving. Headaches, heartache, starving. Poor relationships, poor money, poor job. Hate everything, hate everyone starving you end up starving but who did that to you the king didn't kick him out right he came to his dad he came to his dad with this bright idea right you know our kids come to us with these bright ideas hey mom <laughs> hey hey dad hey let me let me talk to you for a minute oh and they think and they think they got some real game they about to give you too you know what i had this idea and you look and you in your mind like oh god right Let's let's hear this one, right? These these bright ideas, right? So this king, this prince, had a bright idea to separate themselves, right? To start believing it was something different, and it led to starving. Now, is it still up? Yeah. Perfect. Okay, share it again. Now, when did when did things change? Everybody, look at that. When did things change? When he went back to his father. Read it. Say it again. When he went back to his father. Okay, but when did it change? Look at the line. Tell me the line that changed. When he decided that he was, when he started analyzing where he was and how. What he does got it say? To... Read the words where it changed. When, when he, he came, came to his senses. When he came to his senses. That come to Jesus moment, huh? He's gone. Just so, like that. Does that equate to when he changed his state? His, yes. his well, well it, it's when he remembered who he was. Mm -hmm. yeah. When he reattached himself. Your, your computer starts if you pull the plug out. When you reattach it, what does it do? Comes back to its senses. When you detach yourself from your consciousness, when you think, when you think that I am is something, someone, anything, anyone but you, you have detached yourself. You are now going to, if you are not, you have now begun the process of starving. And what I say is, it's a process. Just like when you unplug your computer, it doesn't die right away. Still got a battery, but it just goes down. If you look at the story, we'll have to go back into it because I want to save time. But if you look at the story, he went partying a little bit. He had a little time. He had a little time. He got to get off a little bit. He went to freak me. He, he, got, he got to get, he had a little free dinner. He had a little time, right? He had a little time. 
right? But sooner or later, guess what happens to time? It runs out. Guess what happens? What did it do? Time just keeps moving. It just keeps going. Yeah, what did it do for you? Showed you who the power you have as an individual separated from God. So then time did what to you? Ran out. Yeah. Yeah, the road ended. Boys to men, to the end of the road. <laughs> huh. Yeah. And yeah, that's it. That's it. It's over. He ran out. He had no more money. He was starving, right? It was it. The game was up. The gig was up. I remember I told my mom when I was young, I'm, mom, I'm running away. And she was like, hey, you want me to help you pack? Got, got about a block down. I was like, what? I had my little backpack on, my little luggage, little suitcase. Man, I got to the corner and I said, guess what? And guess what happened to me? Guess what happened to me? You came to your senses, coach. I came to my senses. <laughs> See it? <laughs> See it? That's it. You got, there's only so long this gig can go. There's only so far you gonna go. You went to the corner, that's it. That's it, I made it to the corner. And I looked down and I looked the other side and I was like, huh, oh, this ain't not really that exciting. This is, this is, uh, <laughs> and where am I gonna go? <laughs> you said, where, where's my source? Yeah, right, right, I'm detached. There ain't no money in my pocket. There ain't no, and my mom's whole thing was like, yeah, you can run away, but not with anything on. I bought you. So now I'm out here looking, got mismatched stuff on, stuff I got from somebody else's birthday, that somebody else that gave me for my birthday like a year ago, and it don't quite fit. That was just, it, it, it just doesn't work. It's not sustainable, right? And it's the same thing. When you try to, any time you don't realize this is you. God, the word threatens a whole lot of people, but I, it, but it's just the truth. What this is, God is just the title. God is a title. I am is the name. You have a title at your job. You have a title at your company. You have a title at your business. That's not your name. You can get rid of the title. You can't get rid of the name, so to speak, right? I'm no longer that. Now I'm the CEO. I'm, I'm the COO. I'm the CFO. I'm the this. I'm the that. But no matter what you, you were, you had a name before you got into that. You always, you're going to have your name. I am is the name under all generations. Your name is your name, right? So when you start thinking that I am is anything different than you, when you, I mean, like I said, it takes a, but if you start, if you, if you start thinking that you are any else, anything else but God, if you start thinking that you're anything else but I am, if you start thinking that you're anything else but this little circle right here that's operating all these swings, if you stop thinking We'll, and we'll just call that consciousness. If you stop thinking that you're that at any point in time, you now are, you're now in the process of degradation. You are losing power. And like a lot of things, it doesn't happen right away and it's not cataclysmic. It's just a little bit here, by here, by here, by here, by here, by here. Here by here by here, block by block, step by step, mile by mile. And you look up and say, dang, I'm in another state. Went from a prince to sleeping with the pig, starving. So the only way to come back is, so for all of us to come back, what do we need to do? Change our state of mind. Our senses. Come to our senses. Put it out real big, sir. To your, I mean, all of you in, all of you individually, come to your senses. When you call yourself God, when you say I am, when you know you're talking about the Father in you, you're talking about your consciousness. It doesn't matter what anybody else said. It doesn't matter what they think. They don't know what the hell they're talking about. They only know what they heard. They only know what they're saying. They don't know what they're saying isn't correct. So don't waste your time trying to explain it to them and trying to do or convince them. How can you convince somebody who thinks they're right about something and they don't know they're wrong? How much time are you going to spend on that? How much time are you going to go to the grocery store? If they don't got the chips, how many people do you want to talk to about why they don't have them? Go to another store. Go to another state. 
go to another place in your mind where you are where you want to be. And if you detach yourself from that, you will starve. If you reattach yourself by saying, by coming to your senses, by realizing I am, when you say I am, and you know that that is the power to create anything and everything, you have come to your senses. You are in your right mind. That means you're not depressed. You're not worried. You're not anxious. You're not stressful. You're not fear because what can God be afraid of? What can God be scared of? What can... <laughs> Sparkle put one ink under the lost. That's it. That's it. That's it. Just like the just like the show, Lost, and you walking around on the same terrain over and over. Right. With a whole just bunch of different calamities and dramas and everything else. It's like there's not that many of you alive and still kicking. How can you have this much drama and there's not that many people? <laughs> when he said 40 days, 40 nights. That's it. There. Wandering around in the wilderness, right? That's what the children of Israel were doing didn't believe that their God would take care of them. And Israel, the definition of that is man who rules as God. No, humanity, mankind knowing who it really is. That's what that word actually means. And you're wandering as a child of Israel because you don't know who you are. So you wander around the wilderness called life. Stretched out, stressed out, mad, upset. High blood pressure, diabetes, glaucoma, this, that, this, that, all the things that if you knew who you were, you could never have it. God, let's just use the old school word God. What if God, the old school word, had diabetes? Do you know how long eternity is to have diabetes? Do you know how long it is to have high blood pressure? If you broke, do you know how long broke is? If you got the flu, hey, God, can you, you know what? God's out of the office today. You know, it's that flu blood going around. Well, I need this cat now. I got it. I got, I got a bigger problem. Can you call him in? Is he on call? Something, right? Can you imagine that being having that problem? Not, you'd be like, well, why am I going to talk to you? You got as many or more problems than me, right? No. We, we are, that doesn't happen to us when we know who we are. These things happen as a detachment consciously. We think we're the physical body we're in. We're not. We are the thing that makes that physical body stand up straight. Nothing can be taken from you. That's why it says, okay, I got to give you one more. Okay, because I want them, I want them, I want you guys to see it. Right. Which one? Okay, let that mind. Let that mind, that's in, yep, yeah, that top one, yeah, that one, yeah. Okay, yeah, yep. Yeah. Okay, so, what's the what's five and six say? Somebody read it. Come to your senses, somebody read it. Not all at once, somebody read it today. Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Okay, that's good. Now, so it says, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. What does that mean? On, on street terms, what does that mean? Think What's like, an easy, easy way to like, say it? Huh? Think like Jesus, like think like him. Think like this person. Think like this mind. That's all, a, that's all a person is, is a mind. Meaning a collection of thoughts, feelings, and beliefs and that it acts on called a persona, a pers personality. That's all it is. And they change when those thoughts, feelings, and beliefs change. So, it, but it says, let this mind be in you. It didn't tell you to think like anyone else. In this whole book, it said, let this mind, it didn't say let a mind, someone else's mind, everyone else's mind. It said, think like this one person. And this one person said, I and my father are one. This one person said, no man takes my life from me. This, man, this person says, it's not me that does the work, it's my father in me. It's the living, the living being, I am consciousness in me that does the work. So it's saying, think like that. Then what did it say? Verse six, somebody else, what does verse six say? 
who being in the form of God thought it not robbery to be equal with God. So what is that? So then if you add up the first sentence and the second sentence, then if you call yourself God or you realize what you mean when you say that, and it said think like that person, then what is your problem? And why would you listen to anyone who has something else to say? Have they walked on water? Am I missing it? Have they turned something some water into wine? That's what this character did. And it said, mimic that character. Meaning, think like this person. Take this state of consciousness. This is the ultimate state of consciousness. That's what Jesus in the physical form came to represent. Was physically, is the physical reflection of the non-physical understanding of who you are as a person. And how you can live your life physically by knowing who you are non-physically. How you can live your life properly outwardly because of your knowledge proper inwardly. As above, so below. As within, so without. So this, this mind didn't think it was ro uh, robbery to be called equal. The same, equal, just as valuable, just as important, just as powerful. So that, that God that we all grew up probably outwardly praising and blaming and hoping and wishing and everything else, we are equal. So whatever, whatever we would ask it to do, we can do. And what did it say? If you do, you'll do all the works that I do and even greater. That's the book everybody, that's the book so, so many people are believing, dressing up for on Sunday, it's telling you to do it. It's telling you who you are. It's telling you that you're equal. It's telling you, think like that person, copy that person. If you put that person's mind in your body, wouldn't you do the same thing that it did? You do the same thing. So then, Right? Well, then, if it's telling you to be equal, to think equally, just like this mind thought, then you can do the same thing. It's telling you that. When you, when you think you're something different than I am, when you think you're not God, when you think it's robbery to be called equal with God, when you decide to think different than that mind, you are living a life less than you should. Period, point blank. Less than you should, less than you can, less than what's possible, and less than what's reasonable. Last thing I'll say is that it sounds unreasonable, but reason changes with experience. Out here, we have the Warriors out here, and Steph Curry, probably uh, not probably, the best shooter of all time. One of the things is he has one that he's known for out here is his pregame routine. Like everybody, they show it on TV. People who go to the game get there early to watch that. And he goes through this whole elaborate pregame routine. One of the things that he does toward the end is he shoots half-court shots. And man, dude be hitting them, like, regularly. And historically, that's like, oh, oh, oh. Do you know people now don't even hardly clap or cheer? Mm -hmm. They become accustomed to it. Mm -hmm. He doesn't even shoot it and cheer. He's just like, he's like, oh, okay, cool, it went in. Like, oh, like oh, okay, good, I'm done. He's not even hoping to make it. He's not excited that he made it. Something that we all would think is luck and all think is some kind of big miracle has now become an expectation, not only of the person doing it, but the people watching are like, oh, yeah, that ain't no big deal. Have you made an app or a shot? <laughs> a several times this week. <laughs> several times in your life. They used to put that on highlight shows back in the day. He's making them every game before the game. So my point is that something that seemed unreasonable and miraculous becomes normal to. Mm. When you can ditch, he's practiced, he's shot so many times, it's just like, yeah, that's what I do now. When you change your mind and you start thinking like the God you are, last thing I'll say to you is, last thing I'll say to you is this. Because I definitely want to keep track and be mindful of time. The last, last.
Mic drop. Thank you, coach. If you can sit with that, get comfortable with that, realize that, remember that, remind yourself of that every day, you'll act different. God ain't out here cursing everybody out. God ain't out here stealing and robbing. They don't need to. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. God ain't got to do all this old craziness. God don't have to act like that. Does God act like that? Would you ask, does God worry about that? Does God act like that? Does God talk like that? Does God dress like that? Does God parent like that? Because everything is God. God is doing it all. God is the murderer, the killer, the thief, the beggar, the judge, the parolee, the parole officer. God is the homeless. God is the prince. God is the king. There's only, there's only you in different iterations, in different believing you're different people because there's no one else but you. So you got to believe you're something different in order to have somebody to talk to. But there's only one. And if you realize that's who you are, you are that one and the only one. And there is no God beside you. There is no equal. And you and your so-called humanity are one with that. And you don't think that's robbery to say, yeah, I am that. I'm him. I'm it. I'm her. I'm that thing. You'll act different. You'll think different. You'll expect different. Half-court shots will be like layups. You'll shoot different. You'll walk different. You'll talk. You will live with a level of expectation. Your what's reasonable to you will change. That line will move. It will disappear. That ceiling will shatter. It will real. You'll realize it never really was even real. It was self-imposed because we separate ourselves in mind and we ended up starving. But now we're coming back to our senses, and realizing that's who we are. That's what the book is. It's telling you you are. And all the other books, there is no true superior to me. Like we talked about last week. This is the truth. There is no truth superior to you. You are the truth. There's no thought bigger than you. You are the thinker. You are the thing that makes all the expressions happen. You remember that. You remember that. All right. I know it's late. So if anybody has anything that's pressing they really want to say, otherwise I don't want to hold people. But as always, before I let you say anything, I appreciate you all for coming, for allowing me to run my mouth for two hours. Thank you. And, oh yeah, and things like that. So I appreciate you all. Last thing, like I said, I'll say it one more time, uh, just because I never do and people always ask. Yes, I do coach. Yes, I do help people. Um, if you want to work with me, it's you're more than welcome to. I do individual coaching. I have people every day, some days, whatever. They're on their own program. I have coaching, specific topics that I do. Uh, parenting and the business of you and details and different ones I do. I do consultations if you want to call and ask for advice or opinion or whatever on something or whatever else it is. So I work with people in a variety of ways. If you're interested in having you uh, or with me working with you, feel free to reach out on the mental.academy. There's times you can sign up and it has all the stuff on there for you to look at and see. I just mention it because people do reach out and ask, do you do this or how come you don't mention this or whatever. So I've done it three times a day, more times than I think I've done. I'm already tired of it, <laughs> but, and I don't do it just because I just, whatever, I want everybody to get in and get out, but I'm doing it because people have asked and I want people to know. So, because they've asked. So anyway, just want to mention that. Lastly, thank you all for coming. Is there anything anybody wanted to say before I let you all go and anything else? Thank you. you thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you, coach. This was amazing. Thank you so much. My thank you. Thank you all. Thank you all. My pleasure. Vero, Vero, thank you, goddess, every week. Thank you for bringing us into your world. Thank you for not being selfish. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hey, tell my boy, I said, what's up? He, he has a, a baseball. Y'all sent him positive vibration. Such a God in his own way. Um, he is blessed to have me as a mother, and I love being his mother. Um, he has a, I forgot what you call it, but basically the scouts come out. Mm -hmm. um, it's a funny word. I don't know what it's called, but he has a, a, a it's not an evaluation. It's it's a, I, I don't remember the name of the oh. word, but anyway, he, he has this thing going on today and tomorrow where the scouts are going to come and they're going to watch him. He has every desire and every plan to attend IMG Academy. So he's, he's going out and finding all the resources he needs to get the attention he needs to get scholarships to IMG. So oh. 
He is IMG. Put it like that. There you go. There you go. Awesome. It's good to be back in class, Coach. That's good right, man. <laughs> good to see you, man. Good to hear from you, Justin. Well, hey, awesome, everyone. Well, congratulations. Thank you for another week. We made it. And remember who you are. Sit back, sit with that thought and act like it. Start acting like it. And you'll see it. You'll see it show up in your world. You will see it. We, we're all about that proving. This ain't no feel-good service sermon or her. This is this is about we about that action here. We're proving it, right? So live it, prove it, and you'll see it. You'll see it. Hey, thank you all. Have a wonderful week, a wonderful weekend, and we'll see you next week. Adios. Appreciate you, Coach. Ah, Giovanni, appreciate you. Bye, guys. Bye.